what is up everyone in the ripple and xrp community good morning happy tuesday may is coming to an end the year is halfway over boy oh boy where does time go listen so much to talk about we're going to talk about the european central bank we're going to talk about goldman sachs we're going to talk about the price of xrp where we are going and we're also going to talk about the overall crypto market without further ado let's not waste any time let's jump right into it make sure you give me a follow on twitter xrp news underscore like subscribe click the bell to the youtube channel it's free help support the channel help support me make sure you visit xrprightnow.com the market we've seen a little bit of a recovery was still quite not quite there total market caps about 1.6 trillion down 9 trillion from 2.5 the bitcoin dominance has dropped a tiny bit was at 45 percent sitting at 43.8 percent bitcoin told you yesterday needs to break 40k it is struggling once again it is stuck around that thirty-seven thousand dollar region we did see a nice move from xrp broke a dollar yesterday I believe we we're ranging like a dollar three to dollar four it is back down to about 95 cents all is good so the big question the major question what you probably want to know where is xrp going people are going to pull up my man dr fenner's tweet he has been spot on we're going to continue sharing his charting his analysis until something goes terribly wrong which it hasn't in quite some time so four hours ago he goes xrp hit, hit a dollar with a six hour delay on our expectations that's the reason patience is important let's have a look at the support and resistant levels at our chart currently a dollar 16 and above is important so he is targeting a dollar 16 as the next level we need to break in order to continue this push up and get us back to where we were before this crypto dump if we struggle and we cannot break a dollar 16 or we cannot continue to make a push upward we are going to be revisiting our lovely support levels at 92 78 and 65 cents if we do break 65 cents for those of you for those of you who have been around as long as i have get ready because there is a possible dump all the way back into the 30 cent region it is going to take a lot but it could happen because the bitcoin revisits the nineteen thousand dollar region you better hold on strap on you better load up that fiat you better get ready to have some fun because it's going to be black friday all over people all right let's move over now elon musk put out several tweets last night most of them got deleted i can't show them to you but i'm going to show you the one important one he says i spoke with north american bitcoin miners they committed to publish current and planned renewable usage and to ask the miners worldwide to do so potentially promising yes potentially promising that you're going to ask chinese miners to change what they're doing the chinese miners are currently being kicked out of china i don't even know where they're going to end up so good luck on that but the, the important part here okay this is all great trying to get everyone over to renewable love it no complaints happy to see it but here's my complaint Anthony Papliano been going around lying to everyone, going on TV shows. He was just on Julia Chatterley talking about Bitcoin and how most of the Bitcoin isn't mined in China. He lies. Straight lies to everyone. And Julia called him out. Well, here's a chart that proves it. Just 8% of the Bitcoin is mined in the U.S. and Canada, while 65% of Bitcoin is mined in China. So... The more he spews, the more he lies, the more like a fool that this guy looks. Come on. He start, He didn't even start a pizza company. He has nothing to do with these pizza places. What he does is he offers them boxes. And if you request it, they will put the pizza that they made at their local shop into a Bitcoin pizza box. I'm sure it costs extra to get the Bitcoin pizza box. I'm sure Papa's getting a nice cut. But he doesn't have a pizza franchise. He doesn't own a pizza store, people. Guy's a joke. Let's keep it moving. From Michael Manfield, make sure you give him a follow. He's one of the sleepers in the community. Puts out a ton of great information. You need to keep up with him. He says, Ripple enabled. Temenos is making moves. More than 60 challenger banks worldwide have leveraged Temenos to launch quickly and innovate at speed, including Alba, Banco del Sol, Flow Bank, Flow Lunar, Next Commercial Bank, Vera Bank, and We Lab Bank. 
He says, with our real-time API-first technology, Savin will create a digital ecosystem that offers outstanding experiences, true value in the day-to-day -day lives of our Ontario customers, which segues us over into First Ontario Credit Union, who's launching a digital-only offshoot with Temenos. So why is this big? Because Temenos has been a Ripple partner for some time. Temenos partnered up with Ripple and is using RippleNet's API to onboard people quick and efficient to get onto digital rails. We are seeing a chain reaction of this. We all know what happens. You move them up the legacy system, you move them over to the new digital system. Once they're on the new digital system, you have them dip their toes in on-demand liquidity, you show them how it works, how easy it is, how fast and efficient it is. Once they get comfortable with that and they start opening up additional corridors and expanding, you have them hold XRP. We know the steps. We know the process here, people. This is great news coming from the Temenos camp. And then from XRP Bully, check this out. Flare Networks. That's right. Flare Networks was on the Technic Conference Asia Pacific 2021. At, this is a Golden Sachs events. Talking about digital access and short-term disruption. Remember, the Flare Network is going live. In about four to six weeks from today, you will be getting your airdrop. Remember, I believe it's 15% the first month and 3% a month after that. I can't wait. I think that's really going to open the floodgates. That's really going to cause the price of XRP to decouple, to break away from Bitcoin and the rest of the market. It is going to be exciting. And then we get into the big news. You saw the thumbnail. Thumbnail is about Goldman Sachs. You can't get much bigger when you start talking about Goldman Sachs. You can't get much bigger when Goldman Sachs has started to talk about Ripple and XRP. The first slide, and I covered this before, but I want to bring this back to your attention. This comes from a central banking media download from someone. I think he's like, well, he's one of the presidents and the head of the European Central Bank. He put out this presentation talking about cross-border payments. Talking about the new forms of cross-border and cross-currency settlement. He mentions the use of crypto assets as a bridge currency. Ripple liquidity. What do you think Ripple liquidity means? XRP, on-demand liquidity. That is what Ripple liquidity is. Then he says alternatives based on DLT and CLS net. He then talks about settlement assets as proxies for central bank digital currencies. What do we know Ripple is working towards? A way to build the CBDCs on top of RippleNet so XRP can be the one and only neutral bridge asset to settle them. I want to scroll down and read a couple of these comments. Monica Long puts out, tokenization has always been a key feature at XRPO of over 5,400 issued tokens and exceptions. Central bank digital currencies will live on a new private ledgers that run parallel to the XRPL using XRP as a bridge to interoperate with other currencies. No more walled gardens. Monica Long is telling you. Monica Long was the one who initially told you that Ripple was working with 40 to 50 central banks. Forget the other lady that she was with in that interview, who I believe is no longer at Ripple. Now, just March 3rd, just two months ago, Monica Long comes out and she's telling you that CBDCs are going to live on the XRPL private ledgers that will run parallel to the public XRP ledger, which will use XRP as a bridge currency to interop interoperate with the other central bank digital currencies. But here comes Matt. Matt chimes in. He says, well, the report makes no specific mention of XRP, but the idea of using federated sidechains for CBDC private ledgers is a real one that Ripple is working on. I just want to say that this report talking about Ripple liquidity does make mention of XRP because where is Ripple getting the liquidity from? They are sourcing it via on-demand liquidity, which is XRP. No, do they not? They do not come out and say XRP. Do they ever say XRP? No, they even say we're sourcing the middle liquidity or we're forming settlements, something along those lines. Here's a presentation. I've been over this. Klaus M. Lober was the guy from the ECB that put that out. And then I covered an article on it on May 24th on XRPRightNow.com. Check it out. European Central Bank speaking on new forms of cross-currency settlement. And then we move over to the Goldman Sachs slides. So now remember, 
We just talked about the ECB talking about crypto assets being used as a bridge currency, aka RippleNet, the use of a settlement for central bank digital currencies. Now we move over to this Goldman Sachs slide. For those of you staring at the screen, here's a slide. This came from Goldman Sachs Asset Management. Decentralization, scalability, and security. What is the cost of, derup of, of disruption? They're showing you scalability and security with Ripple and XRP sitting right in the middle of that. Then at the bottom on the second slide, they're showing you that the G7 central banks are going to use Ripple and XRP to settle, to move value between all these G7 central banks. We have plenty of tie-ins back to these G7 central banks. We have plenty of tie-ins to central banks. All it takes is two. Bobway has told us you get two central banks settling cross-border payments, currency swaps via on-demand liquidity. The rest will come. All it takes is two. We're going to get all these G7 central banks involved. There is a reason Goldman Sachs is showing you this. Goldman Sachs knows a lot more than me and you. There is a lot more going on behind the scenes that you actually know. If we knew everything that was going on, do you think that this price would be 93 cents? Of course not. This is still a highly speculative market. But what we are doing as an XRP community is we are finding these documents. We are putting everything together. Goldman Sachs isn't mentioned in Stellar in here. Goldman Sachs isn't mentioned in Cardano. Goldman Sachs is mentioning Ripple and XRP. There is a reason, and there's a reason they are tying them back to the G7 central banks, people. Open your eyes. It is coming, and it is coming in a massive way. That's where I'm going to leave it. Listen, enjoy your Tuesdays. Be nice. Be kind to each other. Make sure you wash those damn hands. The Ripple Van Winkle is out.